Subadoop. Subadoop. Assault Trump. Welcome in, Super Dope Plus Ultra. My name is Kyle, joined today by Feds and my other friend, Little Feds. Yeah, but we're going to call you Jay because Feds Sounds and good. Lil Feds is just too much. Unless it's like a Pete and Pete kind of scenario in which we refer no. to you as Big Pete and Lil Pete. I'm fine with that. You guys nope, know that I'm nope. a Big Pete and Pete fan. Yes, I Jay's do. Jay's good. Oh, shit. I think you're Lil Feds now. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> No, we'll see. So, Jay, uh, welcome in. Jay is Fedgy's little brother. How much younger are you? Three? Four. Four, four years. years. Mm-hmm. All right. So, four years younger. Um, I'm, like, right in between the two of your ages. Then. Um, Jason is kind of a closet nerd weeb type. <laughs> like, he's, how tall are you? Like, six foot six two? Six feet. Six, yeah, you're, like, six foot seven, dude. <laughs> and... Uh, basically you know he's always been like the typical athlete type but like always had this low key video game always weeb nerd side to him yep and like you've always been heavily nar- uh invested in naruto yeah. right as a as a child that was like your gateway drug in the anime <laughs> yeah where dragon ball was mine uh so now so like that you know I'm not gonna say different generation but Sometimes they're equated to two different generations, but we're very close in age. But then I made Feds watch Boku no Hero Academia, and uh, he made you watch the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys think I was going to say it again? <laughs> yeah. And then he made you watch it, and you hooked on pretty quick, no? Oh, my God. It was amazing. First episode on. Yeah, it did. Yeah, you were, you were in from the first episode? Yeah. Yeah? Wow. Huh. Yeah, it takes people some time. Sometimes, like uh, most people that I try to get on it, it took you like what two or three two episodes. Two or three. Yeah. Most people I talk to, it's usually like five. If you can get through the first five episodes, like when he's in, you know, Japanese superhero Harry Potter X Men school. Once he gets there, yeah, you're like this rules. But uh, episode one, you were in. Yeah. What was it that hooked you? Anything in particular? Honestly, just. <laughs> I love superheroes, and uh, it just hooked me. I, <laughs> like the formal education that is associated with becoming a superhero? Because that's what got me. I'm like, what's up, dude? Superheroes, being a superhero is legal? Oh, and 80% of us have superpowers? I don't just have to, like, beef up on yeah, Batman-esque equipment to be able to go <laughs> whoop some vigilante, whoop, whoop some ass vigilante style. There's, like, a formal education, and I got a superpower? Yeah, it kind of just hooked me in, honestly, because I, uh, as a kid, you obviously always want to be a superhero, so you just you get the fantasy. Just, yeah, it's just the fantasy right there. So you like the X Men a lot growing up. I yeah, remember. definitely, and that's what it reminds me of too. Yeah, just the idea of like practicing and trying to train your superpower and hone your quirks. Yeah, exactly. Be able to help sum- be able to help humanity, society. Uh, with your powers. All right, so we're going to talk about episode 70 today. That's called Go. We're finally reading the She Hesaika's home base. But I did want to... <laughs> <laughs> I guess you. Yeah. <laughs> home base. Uh, but I did want to ask you, just so we get to establish your nerd anime cred a little bit more, a <laughs> uh, couple of like temperature questions on My Hero Academia. All right, so like real easy questions. So we'll do the same questions that we did at Comic Con. Yeah. Right? Um, who is your favorite pro hero? You cannot say All Might. Eraserhead. Ooh, Shota Aizawa. Any reason in particular? Uh, honestly, watching when the League of Villains came in and he just sh- started shutting down Quirks and just. Yo, when he fights Absolute, the Nomu. Oh, my yeah. God, man. Oh. It was absolutely amazing. What the a USJ incident. Such a good, yeah, yeah, such a good episode. Yeah. They established Aizawa as the resident badass. Yeah. <laughs> real oh quick. Yep. He got that Batman vibe to him. Shuts yeah. him down, ropes him up, yeah. slams him on the ground. For it's real. Just... Who is your favorite villain? Uh, caveat there is typically you cannot say hero, killer, stain. Cause that's what everybody says. Favorite villain? Villain. Uh... I know it's far now, but honestly, Overhaul is awesome. Oh, dude, he's so scary. 
Yeah. Like I'm legitimately yeah. in a in like a state of panic in dealing with this. Like yeah, these episodes that we watched today, yeah, seventy man. and seventy one. Like the idea of one of our heroes running into him, regardless whether they're a student or a pro, this gives me anxiety. <laughs> yeah, man. Definitely. Just knowing how powerful he is, I mean. I just deconstruct your ass to death. To oh, death. Gosh. One shot. Leave all your blood all over his walls <laughs> as a message to the others. Don't <laughs> fuck with me. Okay? That's okay. a Rawls overall okay. vibe all the time. He's, like, very, <laughs> like, soft-spoken. He seems very polite with his words. Obviously, he's abusing his daughter on the low. Yep. But, yeah. uh, you know, he presents as, like, a very... Timid, not timid. Um, soft spoken, I guess, is the best way. He's very intimidating presence, but like, yeah, it's because he'll fucking splatter you all over the wall. It's just overhaul's deal. Um, if you could have a quirk, what would that quirk be? It can be something that we've seen in the show, or it could just be something that like you've made up in your brain. Like maybe you've thought about it before. Honestly, I'd be like, I haven't. What? Honestly, I haven't thought about it. So you, you've never thought about no. what superhero power you would want. I'd wow. be big into like teleportation. Yeah, that's yeah, a that's, good one. that's pretty cool. Teleportation or flight? I'd be big into one of those two. Probably teleportation over flight in terms of practicality, but that's where my brain lives. Mm. It's always been flying for me. Yeah, flight's dope. Yeah, I mean, I I, I, I would say be Dragon Ball Ultimate Strength, like oh, just, some, just like super almost strength? almost like All Might, but just. I've always just what about super like a, strength. What about like a Kirishima kind of deal? Harden up and you can yeah, punch through walls. Yeah, that's he's serious. I love Red Riot, honestly. He's running Red Riot, man. Who's your favorite student from UA? Uh, I would obviously say yeah. Red Riot, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of where my brain is a lot of the time, too. Usually the caveat there is you can't pick Deku or Shoto Todoroki. Honestly, he's just so positive about everything. He is. Yeah. I love that about him. And he trusts and loves his friends. He's also mm-hmm. Bakugo's boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up. Did you watch the Two Heroes movie? Yes, honestly. It, oh, my God. The last fight scene is just... It's so good. But there's like a really quick scene in there where they're like... T- Walking down the hall. They comment on each other's like attire <laughs> yeah. and shit. Yeah. So oh, amazing. yeah, in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'm like, oh, man, you guys are so boyfriends. I love it. Um, I think that's it in terms of... And the, I think the last question is, will you rate, listen, and subscribe to Dragon Ball Super Dope on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever it is you listen to podcasts? Will I subscribe? Yes. Perfect. I got one, though. What's your favorite story arc? Like, the Hero Killer Stain arc? The... Is that a question that I skipped? I don't remember I if we so. asked people on that one. I think we asked it about Dragon Ball. I don't know if we asked it about My Hero. I don't know. A long weekend. Like Hero Killer Stain, like the the, the USJ, USJ yeah. the tournament arc, the camp arc. Uh, I like the tournament because you get to see everybody's quirks in action yeah, for like the first time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can get down with that. Yeah. That was a good one. Plus, Baka go freaking out at the end about being so pissed about having a a not one hundred percent win. <laughs> and <laughs> he's got the muzzle on and shit. Yeah. Oh my it's just like real careful about how Deco, he oh, his face is really scary. Right. Deco and Todoroki's <laughs> Oh dude. Yeah. York work, not his. Yeah. yeah that's so badass. Oh my god. All right, Jay. All right. I feel like we've uh taken the rectal temperature just enough to kind of know where you're at. All right, we we're talking about episode seventy of my hero academia today. Go. We're finally raiding the compound of the She Hisaikai. So Episode opens up. They have Aizawa uh, kind of briefing the students quickly about how um, they can be involved in this raid. Uh, it's optional for a few of them. Chaco, Asui, um, and the other one who wasn't directly involved, the third of the big three, I think. Was that the third person? Anyway, Aizawa gives them the okay to go because, like we speculated the last time we got together, mm-hmm. um, they don't know that the League of Villains is involved with the Shia Psyche. Yeah. So because they don't think that they're involved, they give the students the okay to go. If they were involved, they probably would put the kibosh on it and be like, it's not safe for you to yeah, go. Yeah, they, definitely. They know who you are. Like, Yeah, prior history, familiarity yeah. with one another. So they don't feel like it's um, the danger is escalated to that level because they don't know that they could potentially be involved. All right. So that's really all that we get. We know that the kids are going to be involved in this raid. 
So now we're waiting, just sitting around waiting for a phone call. When are we going to move on this? Deku, especially, uh, we see a, a few other characters. Mirio kind of waiting around, looking at his phone. Uh, but we primarily see it through Deku. And his whole thing of just like the stress on his face. Like he can't sit there at lunch without it being super visible that he's, he's got under some, some shit. Yeah. He's in doing some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got like some, he's, he's got some internal uh, turmoil going on. Yeah. Um, that he can't really talk about, but I like the moment that they have in the cafeteria where Shoto and Ida are eating lunch next to him, and Ida's like, "Hey, you want to talk about this? We're we're friends, right?" And I was like, "Oh, uh, like before the Hero Killer Stain yeah, arc, before yeah, he goes to High Side, whatever the fuck." Um, Jesus, that's a beautiful callback. I hope they don't beat me over the head with, and then they did beat me over the head with it. <laughs> just like I asked, just like you asked me that one time before this other time. And I was like, yeah, my memory told me about that already, but whatever. I get it. The casuals need to know. Um, anyway, it was a nice little warmer that warmed my heart. And then they fucking put the cherry on top by being like, you want, you want the rest of my lunch? Want some food? <laughs> Looks at him and says, man, you look hungry. Have the rest of our food, please. And then I'm assuming he eats it, and he probably feels real like replenished afterwards, which he needs because the yeah, inner turmoil yeah. of his brain is—I uh, don't know. I imagine it leaves you a man famished, not a dude like me. I obviously I have it all together, so I don't know what that's like to be Who so knows stressed. The last time he ate, he's been under a lot yeah. of stress and shit. So, so in total, two days time pass. So they send all the heroes out to go investigate these whatever it was twelve different sites throughout Japan. Where they think that potentially there could be, um, they could be hiding Erie, and they tell them to look out for certain signs of where they could be manufacturing uh, these bullets, these court canceling bullets. So, like, be on the lookout for places uh, that look like there could be some kind of manufacturing presence. Look out for places where it looks like there's a lot of traffic in and out on the regular basis. Mm -hmm. uh, where yeah. it could be some kind of drugs around the area. and Like they tell them for certain specifics to, to look out for and they have all the heroes go investigate them. Good in theory, right? What does it essentially turn up? Pretty much nothing. You know, it does turn up something though. Night ass trip to the toy store. Cause he's a, oh, yeah. Because he's a fucking nerd. <laughs> and, I mean, uh, we got to presume that he sees the villain and follows him into the toy yeah. store. Yeah. But in my heart, I want to believe that he was on his way to the toy store anyway. I think it's valid to think. I think it's. <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought you were going to cough. No, I'm good. I think it's valid. To believe that just like me, Night Eye still buys toys, and he was <laughs> <laughs> he was going to the toy store. Yeah, man, he likes toys. And it just so happened that Why his not? personal and his professional goals lined up that day. Saw a villain going in trying to buy uh, a Glitter Squad doll. What the fuck was it called? The Gung Ho Glitter Squad 10 series. Yeah, some shit like that. I don't even But homie with the stupid beard face or whatever, the blonde guy, he doesn't know shit about the Gung Ho Glitter Squad 10 series. He thinks that it's just Glitter Squad something or other getting us into some of the Power Rangers talk we had earlier off mic. Power Rangers just update their GD lines every freaking year. Yep. yep. New, new Zords, new suits. Sometimes some new colors, maybe some new actors in those suits, and I'm just supposed to fucking be okay with that. Nope. I'm just supposed to be okay with some half Asian dude taking over for fucking Walter Jones. <laughs> some half Asian dude named Johnny Young Bosch. <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about Johnny Young. So I only make this reference to say right now, the Dragon Ball Z news came out. Two days after me and Jimmy recorded the Dragon Ball Z pod last week. I said, I mean, Dragon Ball Z. That's such a bad, dirty habit. I need to break. Me and Jimmy did a Dragon Ball pod last week. Two days before the JYB news broke. I've got lots of feelings about it. Hope y'all are on the fucking lookout for that podcast. If you're one of those cross listeners who listens to My Hero and the Dragon Ball stuff, leave me your thoughts on Johnny and Bosch. 401-213-9596. 
I want to know how you feel about New Broly. Limited samples, boys, but samples are out there. It's official. 401-213-9596. Anyway, he also was the second Black Ranger for us here in America. That was the whole Toku Sentai Power Rangers tie-in. Gung-Ho Glitter Squad number 10. My brain is working on a different level right now. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm like Bradley Cooper in that fucking movie. Oh, it's movie. <laughs> Limitless? <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Is that what it's called? I think so. <laughs> I mean, I don't have any super drugs going on, but it's just my brain natural. All natural. Baguette. All natural. <laughs> I learned French last <laughs> night in six hours. <laughs> oh, yeah? Viva la France. <laughs> Eiffel Tower. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, go to Squad 10. He doesn't know the difference. Um, but Night Eye, thankfully, is very familiar with the Gung Ho Go to Squad Series 10. And he steps up to help out customer service style. He's like, hey, man. You don't know anything about the GHGS 10. Yeah. <laughs> I did it. That was tough. <laughs> you don't know anything about the Go to Squad, motherfucker? Here it is. And he takes that opportunity to use his quirk foresight on him and basically get all the intel they need to figure out. I mean, not only is the dude buying a little doll for a little girly. Yeah. However you want to look at that. I don't think in Japan they look at it like that, but I think here as a red-blooded American, I have to say he was buying a little doll for a little girly because there's no possibility of him wanting to buy it for himself. Right. Like I believe Night I was there to do. I'm just saying, Night Eye layers like really well tailored suits. He's very fashionable. He's kind yeah. of aloof. I mean, true. true. We'll see how that one pans out. Kind of obsessed with all my. Mm. It was really cool to see how Night Eye's quirk works. It was and super it was cool. cool. Oh my god, yeah. So like he describes it as a film strip a couple episodes before, but it's, it's like a literal film strip. It's actually yeah. a film strip. Yeah, and he just sees kind of like the highlight reels of what's going on in this dude's life. Uh, what is it? One hour into the future, so like he like is able to, um, basically find where they're keeping Eerie. Yep. Yeah. Not it's not one hour into the future, is it? I think it's yeah. as long as he wants to look. As long as he wants to look, but the longer the further he oh, looks, the, the choppier yeah. he gets. Right. And Got I think it. the quirk only lasts an hour on the person. I think that's what it is. Yeah, right. the corp. He's able to see. He's able only able to use it for an hour. Got yeah. it. Got but it. Got it. He can see as far into the future as he wants. But he's only so got he's... an hour in real time to watch it. He, that's why it, it, right. it comes in like chunks, like a clip show almost. You right. know, mm -hmm. right? Highlight reel style. Okay, cool. I'm glad that we're talking through this because otherwise I would fail to not only explain it but also understand it. So because we have that film strip, we got a cool. Uh, visualization of how his quirk actually works, at least, you know, on the inside of his brain. Uh, and you see his pupils turn all big and clock-like and purple. Um, it's very cool. Very cool. And we get all the intel on, on not only where they're keeping Eerie, but ultimately how the fuck to get in there. Um, so we are now getting ready to go. Um, we did make mention in passing, now that we're... Uh, getting ready to go raid the place now that we know where it is and we've had this run in with the glitter squad we do have a passing moment where like they all get the call to go deku mirio all the students they all wake up whatever it was like two or three o'clock in the morning and they're mm -hmm. like all right tomorrow morning we're rolling it's going down we're going the fuck down rolling 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 what? <laughs> so yeah <laughs> 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 so when the other students wake up in the morning and realize that Deku and um, whoever else is gone, they do make mention of Tokayami being gone off in uh, Kushu, I believe. Um, I think it's interesting that they even bother to mention it. I wasn't on my fucking radar. I know that he has an internship, but we haven't seen him anywhere. And he's, right. uh, he's not right. involved in the slightest in any of what's going on. Um, you guys think that's a hint? Maybe. I have no idea. I'm I'm not too positive know. either. All I'm saying is What do you think? Unfortunately, guys, there's several things in the manga that have been spoiled for me. I will never tell you what those things are. Okay. What I will tell one you of those things. is that what has been spoiled for me is tied to, I think anyway, pretty sure, 
this hint. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, just saying, something to be mindful of. Tokayami, his whereabouts, who he's doing the internship with, maybe. Should all be on our radar. Okay. Uh, 8 a.m. on in front of the police squadron. I like, <laughs> like that segue. I like that they all just like stand out in the street. Like <laughs> nothing covert about that. Reading the warrant right? out. So, word by word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I like that. They'll never know we're coming. <laughs> yeah. The ominous surprise, I think, kind of goes out the window when like 50 cops and 50 heroes all it's roll like a parade's up. worth of cops. Um, Dude, I'm so <laughs> glad that you used the word parade because I was like, that's exactly what yeah, it looks like. It looks like a fucking parade. A and fucking... what's up with the chief's face? Uh, I don't think it's his face so much as it is it's his, his hair. hair. It's his hair, yeah. Oh. The little triangle down the middle. Looks like a dummy. And whoever his fucking barber is needs to be. <laughs> he needs to lose his fucking job. Yeah, their barber license should be revoked. Forever. Stupid ass hair. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. That's how we punch that one up. Stupid ass hair. Stupid ass hair. So we get ready to uh, roll up to the Shia Saikai's uh, fortress. We find out that it's in none of these other 12 random ass spots that all the heroes went and investigated. Um, through um, the really fun voice of Rocklock, who's we find out that uh, Night Eye reveals, he's like, yeah, man, I got the inside track. I use my use my quirk. And Rocklock's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. So pissed. I'm glad that we did get a quick um visualization of how Rock yeah, Lock's yeah. quirk works. Yeah. When he goes to like jump from building to building, he throws out a little tiny block of wood. Yeah. I still want to see what he can do though. I want to see action. what he does offensively yeah. in a fight. Yep. And we're gonna have the chance to at some point, because in the next episode he's part of the gang that infiltrates. But I wanna see his quirk in action. So GD badly. Um so Rocklock is uh, really upset that Night Eye used the quirk, but Night Eye's like, fuck you. Use it for exactly what it's for. I know how to get in there now. And we're going to go storm the palace. As they're approaching the door, out pops this ginormous. I don't really know how to describe the dude. It was kind of like a Bane type. Yeah. Yeah, but he also had like a shark like quality to yeah. him. He was like Street Sharks. Y'all remember Street Sharks? Yeah, I remember Street Shark. Literally, they eat up pavement yeah. and sewer caps and shit. Yeah. At least in my fantasies. I don't know. I never watched the show. I just see the toys. Something like that. And I'd be like, they look like they live off a steady diet but of I do remember rocks like, I don't. Cement. I never watched it, but I do remember like seeing like the commercials for it and shit when I was young. So Space rocks and cement. Yeah. Um, he just blasts out from within the hideout. And obviously, right off the gate, you're like, oh, no. They know we're here. They know we're coming. Um, they just busted up. They kicked out their own door to fucking catch us off guard and, you know, turn it on its head. We're trying to storm their gate. They kick out their defenses and just come out swinging with this huge guy. It's big freaking goy. Big freaking goy. And uh, we finally get to see. It's like the Kool-Aid man bashing through your wall. It really was. Except for some reason. <laughs> Why are you here? Less scary? <laughs> Does yeah. that make sense? Um, like, left, that guy is less scary than the Kool Aid guy. <laughs> you heard me. Wow. You, you heard it here first, folks. But thankfully, there's somebody scary than the both of them. Her name is Ryukyu, the fucking dragoon hero. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, right? What the hell is that? Uh, yeah. She just like. She's does, like the human dragon. It's weird. She does Liu Kang's animality from <laughs> right? Mortal Kombat <laughs> Annihilation. <laughs> <laughs> and just turns into like a dragon human thing and uh, fights him off and, and holds it off. So, um, chaos. Straight fucking chaos erupts in the street here. And uh, I don't know, man. Look, we got a mix of police. We got a mix of pro heroes. There aren't too many students outside of the students that we know, obviously. But um, Uraraka and... Um, Asui, yeah. Froppy, they mm -hmm. get caught up in supporting uh, Ryukyu, so they're going to be staying outside. We know that Kirishima, Deku, Mirio, Tamaki, they're all going to be running in anyway, making the attempt to get in here. So obviously we know because we see that Overhaul gets the call, uh, you know, that they're on the move. So we have to wonder who gives Overhaul the tip-off because we just watched this huge fucking shark 
street shark man bust out the front door like we see overhaul get the call a couple hours before right um first I mean, question is who is the person the who's the person who tips him off I, maybe there's a spy from the league watching it listening. could it could be a hero who's a traitor yep it could be somebody from the league of villains who might have the inside track on something but that would be something that i mean mm. whoever calls overhaul knows about the the super secret operation that the police and the investigators are going out of their way you know to keep hitting and they're moving really quick on so it's uh, somebody on the inside mm -hmm. um but then even more interestingly overhaul then walks over to a hospital bed and there is an older gentleman in it and uh he's like sorry pop things are about to get loud so soon have to his dad right yeah um i want to know because this quirk seems to be generational like what him and eerie have i want to know what his pop's quirk is and how it Definitely, ties in yeah. to the the family sure. lineage of the quirk uh evolving um i also want to know why he's in that bed and uh why is there such a give us an overhaul backstory hmm <laughs> yeah, but like, here's the thing: we know that Overhaul is. I mean, yes, it's his daughter, but we also know that he's got no I don't think shame. I don't you don't think, think Eerie's his daughter? I don't think it's really his daughter. I do. You do? Yep, one hundred percent. It makes sense. The quirk lineage uh, there true. makes sense to me. True, but I, I don't think know. it's really his daughter. I don't know why they would know. bother to do the fake out on that. I don't. I, it we'll could see. not be. Who knows? But um, the way in which he treats his daughter. Obviously, he's trying to allocate a lot of resources and time to her through his fucking henchman. He doesn't want to do it himself. But um, the the way in which that relationship, <sighs> the way in which that relationship works, is obviously you know like he can use her to his benefit. His dad, older dude. If we're to assume that the quirk lineage works in that way as well, overall his quirk is some kind of improvement on what the dad's quirk is. Well, what the fuck is the dad's quirk? And is that dad's quirk worth keeping him alive in a hospital bed for some reason? So I'm interested to see what his dad's deal is because up till now, not really touched on, not really explored. Yeah, true. Um, but obviously, they get the tip off. We need to um, move. We need to basically overhaul his plan at that point gets to be uh, stalling. Like, we need to make distance. We need to get Eerie out of here. And uh, let's dispense the eight bullets of the Shia Saikai. Why the eight bullets? There's only three of them. Well, no, there's, that you see. there's only three in the next episode that we see. But, yeah, I mean, oh. uh, 72, you know, that we'll talk Didn't about. they show all of them while they were going through They the, do, when yeah. They were talking about them. While they talk about the eight bullets of the Hasekai, there's three, and then there's two, and then there's... I think it was... Maybe two and one. Yeah, I think something that's like that. what it was. Yeah, that makes sense in terms of the anime fucking pace and tropes or whatever. But, um, yeah, so we get to see the next... Oh, the first three of the eight bullets of the Hasekai... So they break through the door, Fakum, uh, through all the chaos, you know, kicks down a door. Um, I like that through all of the bullshit, they still read out that they have a warrant to investigate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like still very much going by the book. And uh, yeah, they run into, um, you know, seemingly uh, what could be a very bad situation, them obviously having been tipped off about uh, their raid on them. Now, a couple things that we did not cover um, or touch on at all throughout uh, this episode that were mentioned that I want to mention. One, Gran Torino's not in on this raid. Nope. And considering, nope. like, the status that he seemingly has, yeah, like, I think it's interesting the way that Gran Torino is held in this series because when Deku first goes and does his internship with him, there's work study or internship. Yeah, internship. Yeah, it was internship. They treat him like such like a Yoda type hermit, which yep. totally yep. makes yep. sense. Like he's the evolved version of All Might, the Ben Kenobi, the Yoda to All Might's Ben Kenobi. He's like the next trainer guy. I get it. But now, like whenever you see Gran Torino, he's like working on these really high profile cases with the police. Like it's almost like he's a forgot about and dude. When they first show up and portray him, like, yeah, like he's a you nobody. He was like a little, yeah. he was like a legit pro at one time. Like. Yeah, but apparently, like maybe that whole "I'm a bum, washed up, nobody hero" is just a facade because he's always working on these high profile cases. Oh yeah, in the nah, he's still. That being said, he's not involved in the raid, so 
I'm hopeful. Everybody's still involved. He was involved in the investigations and trying to figure out where they were going to do the raid. Um, I'm hopeful that if something goes bad, we still have the Gran Torino card to bail us out. Yeah. 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 Gran Torino saving the day is never a bad thing to me. Um, as I would just say to Deku on the way in before the raid, use your head. Mm-hmm. Remember, him, I'm watching you. I'm watching you. Use your head. Give him a little fist to the fucking chest thing. Again, talking about the idea of trying to regain his trust. So be on the lookout for that. Fat Gum gives uh, Tamaki a can of swordfish or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I know, having already watched 71, we don't see no swordfish. All right. No, but the spoiler here's the thing, alert for here's the thing with that. The way he said it makes me think that he might be the traitor. You think Fat Gum's a traitor? But here's why. It why would he give him that and he said you're gonna he said you're gonna need it. Oh, like very assuredly. Yeah. I don't hmm. know. Why did, how does he know that he's gonna need it? Um Maybe he's just giving him a food source and extra. He, I think maybe he's. I mean? Yeah, I think more he's just like, know. hey, you might need a sword hand. You could definitely be right, yeah. I think he it's meant a, it more like you're going to need a sword hand or something to fuck somebody up. Kebab people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's <laughs> I mean, a lot of all, crazy villains. They, in they also do have the backgrounds of the villains as well. So Yeah, they do he distribute might just out know the fact that sheets, there might be uh, someone he's going to go up against. That's true. true. Yeah, true. there could be one of the eight bullets of the Shia Saika that we don't know about yet that. He could look to impale with his sword fish in his pockets. Um, also, Mirio, uh, as he's running in through that door with everybody, insistent this time, is going to be different. He's not going to let Eerie down this time. He's going to save the MF and We're going to save you. This time will be different. <laughs> that was a dope line. It really was. Yes. That's like the fucking meme moment. Yeah. Him yeah. running in. This time will be different. Eerie, I'm going to save you. That's that kind of thing for me. That's that feeling. Um, so that's episode 70 of My Hero Academia. If you're on the public feed today, we appreciate you listening. Uh, if you could rate, subscribe, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, all the places where the podcasts live. That's dope. Also, though, if you like My Hero Academia, hopefully you've got friends who like My Hero Academia. Just like I'm fortunate enough to have two friends who like My Hero Academia. If you have friends who like My Hero Academia, why don't you tell your friends about me and my friends who like My Hero Academia and tell them <laughs> to, to listen on Apple Podcasts, such as Spotify, all the places where the podcasts live. Sheesh. That was pretty impressive, I'm not going to lie. Do me a favor and help me out. <laughs> all right, I feel like I just earned it with that last yeah, one. Yeah, you did. Jeez Louise. It was almost all right. like the woodchuck saying. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Woodchuck, chuck for woodchuck, chuck, chuck, yeah. chuck wood. Yeah. I almost did <laughs> that one like too. That. Um, all right. Thank you for listening. Um, we're going to uh, go do 71 now. If you're on the Patreon feed, you get to listen to the 71 game plan now. Lucky you guys. If you want to hear the game plan for 71 and maybe you just want to hear more of our raucous nonsense, Dragon Ball, no, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon.com slash Dragon Ball Super Dope. You can hear all sorts of obnoxious uncut episodes along with other things like OG Dragon Ball or the first two and two? Two seasons of My Hero Academia or maybe Death Note. You like Death Note? It's there. Go listen. Make sure you go check out episode two. Should be up right now. We're talking about episode 71. Sun Eater of the Big Three. Anyway, if you're on the Patreon feed, this will be one long episode. Long episode. Thank you, Feds. For the uncut version. So we're going to sing the song now. Go ahead. Gonna raise my hand with a peace sign. Go listen to the uncut one. Dang, dang. Fuck was that at the end? You fucked it up. Sorry, I tried to add something into it. You can't add something into something that already exists.